Anyway. Okay, welcome back to Katya. And we are sailing, so you're probably going to hear a few bumps and uh, knocking around. We're discussing today the differences between catamarans and monohulls. Now, I have no experience on monohull sailing other than very small monohulls. Um, not so small they don't even have cabins. So that was as a, as a kid, you know, sailing around a lake. But uh, but Katya has sailed a few monohulls. Yeah. Make sure you speak up so they can hear you because they've got a lot of background noise. <laughs> okay. there. So, uh, so you've sailed some monohulls. What kind? What kind of monohulls have you sailed? Uh, different. Starting from 11 meters to 22 meters long. And different styles, different companies, gullets. And it's uh, made by two Turkish. Oh. And so, yeah, they are all from like some people like monohulls. I know people who just love monohulls and they can't uh, even imagine life in a catamaran. And there are people who love catamarans and they don't like monohulls. And I would say that obviously there are pros and cons in both of them. And me personally, yeah. I would I I dream about catamaran. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is my dream. Like once, like when I I don't know when, <laughs> but I dream of catamaran to have to own catamaran. Yeah. Um, because um, catamaran catamarans they are more spacious. There are more space inside. Cabins are big, big saloon, big space outside on the deck where you can still spend time and get something. Um, Mono house uh, different, they are different, yeah. but most of them, why I don't like uh, the stability, uh, catamarans are more stable. You can obviously get seasick when waves are big or when it depends how the waves keep the catamaran. But in Monaco, it's a very common thing <laughs> to be seasick. <laughs> <laughs> it is? Really? Very. Yeah. I Especially when it's uh, wind in the nose and then the catamaran is inclined. Not very nice feeling. Well, I see the the monohulls out here at night I look at the I look at the, the light at the yes. top of the mast and it's just going gee gee exactly. it's just like I would get I get sick just looking at the <laughs> at the light let yes. alone being on the thing but uh, like today now we've got uh, what 25, 25 plus yeah I've seen 28 earlier 28, 28 knots uh, wind directly behind us uh we're sailing straight downwind um just a jib yeah just a jib that's it i mean we we just we're we're going to cape verde uh on our way across the atlantic and uh yeah i mean it's i could take the camera out here and show you but trust me it's rough <laughs> we're, we're moving around here and uh you know, uh, you can look at our little camera here. It's pretty steady. It's just sitting on the table. And we are moving as well all uh, the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. we're, we're moving around and the sun is coming in. And Anyway, but uh, no, I think uh, I was afraid to take Gail, my wife, on, on a monohull because I was afraid. I was afraid that it, it would make her afraid when she seen the boat. Yes. Heaving over, you it know. Is, it is. It's quite scary sometimes can be. I can't tell. Especially when I've been in a storm that are 45 knots. And then when it's in your face and you're healing, it's not a pleasant at all feeling. We were we were in Catahena, right? Catahena. Yeah. And these, these, uh, 
Was, were they British? I think they were British, those guys that took off. They, uh, anyway, there was a boat, a monohull that took off. And oh, yeah. During, during the storm, I mean, they left the harbor in weather like this. And, you know, we'd, we didn't leave the harbor in weather like this, but this is what we ended up with. But, and it's, it's fine, it's nothing we can't handle. But for them, they, they told me, they said, with the, we like to sail with the winches in the water. Now what that means is just having that baby heeled over like crazy. Just, just have that mainsail just above the water line, you know. Just. <laughs> People are different. They were. I, I prefer to sail and there is a wind, 20 knots, okay. That's a perfect 20 knots wind. Yeah. And then when it's getting more higher, then it's already, you know, you need to put cheap some reefs, but before 20 it's good, above 20, 10 it's also good, 10 to be like 15 to 20 is, uh, it's really nice. Yeah. yeah, you hear that little bell ringing there, now that's how we know that it's getting rough, when the bell up there rings, that's the end, that's usually the point at which Gail gets mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> she says, she says, you need to do something, because that bell's ring. <laughs> it's nothing we can do now. <laughs> not, a, not a thing. And that was just a little thing, so I don't think that was a big deal. But uh, No, I think for me, the, uh, the space, like you mentioned, uh, the stability, not, uh, you know, you hear the thumping and banging once in a while. Now, we are, in all fairness, we're going downwind. So there's not a lot of banging. If we were going upwind, this would be a rattle trap. I mean, really. Yeah, and this is another uh, difficulties with the catamarans that they can go uh, upwind, uh, but it's more difficult. And also, there are things that uh, catamaran can go up and down. Yeah. And that's why all the catamaran they have windows uh, down there. And uh, monocal they can't do that. If they can, they will do it over again, just break the mouse and that's it. And they, everything will be uh, like normal. But with catamaran it can go. Yeah. Catamaran. But just uh, obviously there are some stuff that you need to know how to avoid that and that's it. You don't go when it's red, when it's whether the wind is red, I mean, and when um, the wind is in your face, that's bad. Well, I think, yeah, what, what I do, uh, just so you know, is if I've got to go upwind with this boat, uh, I'll take the boom way out to the side like I'm going downwind. And it's kind of it's 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 it's, uh, it's the opposite of what you would think. Because normally, if you're going upwind, you want the the boom in the center of the boat, and you want the jib tight and in the center. And what I do is I'll take the boom, I'll have maybe three reefs in the main, and I'll take the boom way out to the side so it's catching almost no wind. It's just a little, just enough wind to fill the sail but not really enough wind to give you a lot of power and then I'll take the uh, I'll take the the, uh, the jib and I'll about half size it and so let's just say you got 20 knots you know and, and you're you're tacking back and forth going up wind we go like 60 degrees off the wind and uh, and we go slow we go three knots you know and otherwise I feel like I know there are other catamaran owners who don't feel this way, but I feel like you're damaging the boat if you just let if you just let the waves beat the hell out of it. I feel like you're damaging the trampoline, you're damaging the structure, you're elongating holes on the cross beam. I just you know there's no, it's just a banging is. Uh, you, you just, I remember first times and I was in the monocal and it was 45 knots wind and it was banging like so badly, I was, first my, like, a few times I had the thought that we're gonna break in pieces. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I was asking uh, the owner, uh, this one, how I 
we're gonna survive it. <laughs> it's, it seems to be not, and he's like, he was like, no, boats are made for that. <laughs> yeah, it's all fine. <laughs> they are they are made to take abuse, but but like on on one trip, we actually broke our our hot water heaters, one of those rectangular ones, and uh, but we actually broke the welds. On the water, on the water tank. Wow. Yeah, and it, uh, and it was because they were jumping. Yeah, because the boat was beating so bad that we got into a situation where we just we had no choice, and we were we were actually going into a harbor, and the wind was coming against us, and it would be just like turning turning around right here and going straight up into that wind, full throttle, and it That's just crazy yeah, just them. stuff just started breaking and. Uh, you know, it's just not what you want to do. But uh, anyway, before this video gets too long, I appreciate <laughs> Katya being along with us on this Atlantic expedition, and we are having a great time watching videos, right? And playing music, and uh, we're letting the boat take care of us, and we're not taking care of it. So. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Don't misunderstand us. <laughs> It's it's uh it's been a nice ride though. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good passage. So far. Anyway. Cape Verde is our next stop. Bye.